Well, hello, everyone. I'm James Dobson, and you're listening to Family Talk, a listener-supported ministry. In fact, thank you so much for being part of that support for James Dobson Family Institute. Well, hello there. I'm Roger Marsh, and today on Family Talk, we're sharing the enlightening second half of Dr. Dobson's recent conversation with grandparenting expert Larry Fowler. Larry Fowler is the founder of Legacy Coalition, a national ministry focused on equipping Christian grandparents to fulfill their biblical role of impacting their grandchildren for Christ. Larry and his wife, Diane, have two grown children and seven grandchildren, and they live in Riverside, California. The Legacy Coalition serves and ministers to grandparents through podcasts, webinars, blogs, and other resources. The ministry also conducts a national conference on Christian grandparenting called the Legacy Grandparenting Summit, which is coming up next month on October 21st and 22nd. Now, to learn how you can attend the summit in person or at one of the satellite locations, just visit drjamesdobson.org forward slash broadcast. Today, Dr. Dobson and his guest Larry Fowler will be sharing some stories from their own lives. They'll also talk about the importance of blessing your grandchildren and what that actually looks like in real life. Let's go there right now. You know, we were talking last time about building relationships with your grandkids. Uh, I had another godly grandparent, a grandmother in this case, who was grouchy and cranky and boring and never played with me. And when I went over to the house, I was bored. Guess who I was not influenced by particularly? That one, because she loved the Lord, but she never seemed to understand that our relationship mattered. And again, it illustrated for me the importance of taking the time to know that child. You have written in some of your materials that it's important for grandparents to bless their grandchildren. Talk about that. Well, I had only heard the word blessing. I wish I would have known this years ago. I'm guessing you had this on your show many years ago and I missed it. (laughs) But the whole whole idea of the verbal blessing, pronouncing the Levitical blessing over your kids was something that is a pretty new idea to me. I have only known of that idea for maybe 10 years. And if there's anything I wish that I would have known early in my journey as a grandparent or even as a parent, it is this. I'm sorry. We learn that from the Jewish community. We do. We do. Children of Israel and early examples. And we have kind of done away with rituals in our Christian faith that are very, actually very important teaching tools. That's one in the Jewish faith. There's a very, very important teaching tool in addition to all the other benefits of a blessing. But I see the blessing as we're talking about as the opposite of prayer. Prayer is speaking to God on behalf of others. A blessing is speaking to others on behalf of God. And who better to do that than a grandpa or a grandma into the lives of grandkids? So we regularly bless our grandkids, especially the little ones that live near to us. My youngest is now six. When he was two, we would take him for the afternoons and he'd have a nap at our house. He, he would protest the nap every time. My wife, Diane, would tell him, Micah, it's time for your nap. And he would, he would say, no one would take a nap, you know, and he would <laughs> protest. And she wouldn't listen to it. She'd just say, okay, but before you do, uh, Grandpa wants to give you a blessing. So she would bring him over to me and I would take this very, very active, never standing still two-year-old put my hands on his head and something miraculous would happen. He'd stand still. (laughs) And I'd put my hands on on either side of his face, look him in the eyes, give him a great big smile, and I'd say, Micah, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now go take your nap. And you know what? He never protested his nap after I pronounced that blessing. No kidding. He would go right up and lay down and go to sleep, and, and that was it. And after a while, he, you know, he wanted it. He would say, Grandpa, you give me peace? Because at two years old, that's what he called it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he remembered that last phrase. Do you think he understood what you were doing? No. No, not so much. At one point, this is still when he's two, he said, Grandpa, what's peace? 
Try explaining that to a (laughs) two-year-old. So I'm not sure he had a comprehension, but he knew it was something loving and positive and good. As our grandkids have gotten older, of course, how we do it is different. These are wonderful ideas, Larry. We're talking to Larry Fowler. Have you written a book on this? No, but there's some great books out there. I haven't. Well, because there are some good books out there. I have chosen to write on some things for for which there are no books. You know, Gary Smalley and John Trent have an incredible book on the blessing. As a matter of fact, you asked me if we'd done a radio program on this subject, and it was with them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, I mean, they're wonderful. So there's not so much the need for that. A good friend of mine, uh, Kevin Harper, uh, has written a book called Courageous Grandparenting. And in that book, he has a chapter on the blessing. And so there's material out there on, and there are videos on it, too, where parents and grandparents can watch to get an idea of what's meant by the blessing. Let me read you something I wrote since we're on that subject. This awesome. is from my book, Legacy. By the way, uh, I think it's important to understand the the difference between a legacy and an inheritance. An inheritance comes from what you give, usually materially, in money or property or whatever it is. An inheritance is things. Yes. A legacy is what you build in someone. Absolutely. And we're talking today about building a legacy in your grandchildren. Yeah. Well, I want to read to you from my book on legacy. Psalm states precisely what God wants parents to do regarding the training of their children. The verses were intended not only for the children of Israel, but for you and me. This is our assignment. Read these verses carefully. Oh, my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things, things from old, what we have heard and known, what our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and his wonders, the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law of Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children. So the next generation will know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn will tell their children. They would put their trust in God and not forget the deeds, but would keep his commands. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Psalms 34, 11, yeah. and Psalm 78. Isn't that wonderful? That yes. tells us what, as grandparents, we ought to be trying to do. You know what's fascinating to me about Psalm 78 is I love those verses. Psalm 78 is a recounting, you know, of the history of Israel that wasn't all so good. Yeah. But I think that that psalm was written somewhere around 500 years after Moses, maybe hmm. somewhere around that time. How many stories from our ancestors of 500 years ago do we know? Yeah. Somehow they were able to pass on those stories for 500 years. Isn't that amazing? And that's the vision that grandparents need to have. And it's interesting that there in Psalm 78 it mentions two generations that are not yet born. And we tell grandparents that's a vision you have to have. This is not about you impacting your grandchildren and have them grow up godly. Your vision has to be for your grandchildren's grandchildren. That's what I was really trying to say with legacy yeah. in that. Yeah. Uh, That's what legacy we, is. We, we lose the generational understanding if we're not careful. That's what's worrying me right now about the generation that's growing up now. They don't know Christ, and they don't know the Scriptures, yeah. and they don't know what revival used to be. If we lose that generational impact, and that's what we're uh, commanded to do is don't forget the wonderful things the Lord has done in our family. If you have a Christian family, your grandkids need to hear those stories and know about it. Well, and when you're a young parent, you don't necessarily, or a parent of, of even 
middle schoolers or teenagers, you don't think so much about passing on the family stories to your kids. When do we start thinking about that? When we become grandparents. That's why the engagement of grandparents is so important. If they're going off on cruises and they're going to just retirement villages and and separating their relationships with their children and grandchildren, those stories, those faith stories, never get passed on. Because you you kind of naturally don't think about doing it when Kids you're young Kids love parent. stories. They, they want to hear them. They do. They want to hear them. And, in fact, I have a few stories. I tell my grandkids, I'm going to keep telling you these stories over and over again until you can tell them back to me. Because I want you to be able to tell this story to your grandkids about your grandfather way after I die. What do you tell to them? I have a long story that's too long for this, but it's about a time that I that I saw God perform a miracle and use me to help save a little girl's life that had cancer over in the country of Ukraine. And it's too long for this. But so I tell them that whole story. It's stories of when I saw God work. A sh- much shorter story is one time we, we raised our kids in Southern California. And one time we were traveling on a freeway there in Ventura County of California. And right in front of me, the two cars crashed and hit each other, and I was right behind them. You know, instantly I knew there was a car on this side and on this side uh, of me. I couldn't swerve to avoid it. There was only one thing to do, and that was head for the opening right between these two cars that had crashed. And God just helped me to hit that opening perfectly. I got a scratch on my left wheel well and a busted mirror on my right side. So Mm. I actually hit both cars. You're kidding. But I went through without any scratches or or any further incident. And I tell my grandkids, God protected us. We could have all died and you wouldn't even be here if God hadn't protected us for that. Now, I want you to tell your grandkids about the time that God saved us from a car accident. So you it's know, those you kinds know of they go to church and they may not hear the sermon. They'll remember that story. They will remember. Larry, you have shared a story about how you got started working with grandparents, and I think it's wonderful. Share it with us. Well, it was very personal first. Way before as a ministry, it was personal. My daughter's first marriage failed. My son-in-law at that time had made some terrible decisions over and over again. And she'd finally had all she could take of affairs and drugs and different things. And she and her three little ones moved in with us. And for a number of years, I was both dad and grandpa. Hmm. I did not want my grandsons to follow in the sins of their father. Yeah. And that was the beginning of me saying, I'm going to step it up as a grandparent. I still hadn't thought about the biblical component of that. I didn't realize that there were commands in the scripture about what I was to do as a grandparent. I didn't realize there were examples there. But but that was where I got my start. And you know there's mm-hmm. there's just not really any perfect families. All of us have issues and how we respond to the issues is so important and God took this tragedy in my family, in my daughter's family. And he's used that in their life, in her life for good. Was that the beginning of a mission of ministry? No, that came a lot later. That was all just the personal commitment that I was making to myself and to my daughter. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step it up. I'm going to be the dad to this boy, and I'm going to be a grandpa too. She's since remarried, and when she remarried, she now has this wonderful, godly husband that we just love. He's adopted her three kids, and I don't have to be dad anymore. I get to be grandpa. <laughs> Now, but he also had a daughter that we met for the first time when she was 14. And so we've had the experience of trying to connect with a step granddaughter, and that's been a journey. And we're seeing that God, in His grace, has, has made that better as, as well. And we're now having an opportunity to really connect with her a lot more. When we began our time together last time, you talked about. Uh, church is not really focusing on grandparenting. Uh, And in your writings, you talk about a ministry vacuum. Is that what you were referring to? That's what I'm referring to. I, I saw, how could it be that tens of thousands of churches 
across America understand rightfully that they need to equip parents. And after all, that's what your ministry has well, been. Now, they're doing years. that to some degree. They are. But we're talking about but grandparents with, here. They yeah, with don't grand- think of them. How can there be tens of thousands thinking about parents and not even one ever thinking about grandparents? So that's what we want to change. And now we're seeing hundreds of churches. It's growing all the time. Hundreds of churches that are saying, we're going to start a grandparent ministry. We're going to equip them to be the disciples what of the grandparents. a great idea. Well, we believe in the local church. You know, I've church, been working so with families for 44 years or more than that, really. And I have not stopped to think about a ministry specifically for grandparents. But that's deeply, and grandparents have needs of their own. They, they do. They need to know how. They need to be equipped and motivated. And we know the role is different. You said that. Yeah. The role's a little different. You can't parent anymore. You You're dare, still, you dare we say not it this try. Way. <laughs> yeah, you better not try. We say it this way. You're still the parent noun, but you must no longer parent verb unless invited. And that last part's the key. Yeah. <laughs> if they invite you, okay. But other than that, keep your mouth shut for the most part. <laughs> Let's talk about the summit that you've got yeah. coming, the Legacy Grandparenting Summit. It's going to take place in Birmingham, Alabama and uh, in 110 remote locations. This is a big deal around the country. It's uh, it's in many of the states. And so with that many locations, uh, most everybody that is a listener, if you live in North America, will be able to drive to a location and participate in the conference. How did we find out where they're going to go meet? to LegacyCoalition.com and there'll be a bar right across the top that says Summit. We call it the Legacy Grandparenting Summit. It is the national conference on Christian grandparents. What will happen there? Well, it's two days, uh, 9 to 4.30 and everywhere but East Coast and there it's 10 to 5.30. But 9 to 4.30 in all the other time zones, there's going to be two sessions every morning, two a- afternoon. Uh, 20 different speakers, all with short talks about different issues relating to grandparents. We got music by Fernando mm-hmm. Ortega, uh, Scott Wesley Brown, and the Isaacs. We have some couple wonderful Christian comedians that are grandfathers and can flat out mm-hmm. preach to. So we have a great thing. Do they have to register for this? They do. The cost is $89 at Birmingham, $59 at all the other sites, and it'll stay that way clear till conference day. Now, what is the site that they go to to register? LegacyCoalition.com, and you'll see Summit at the top. There's right there, right in the very front, there's a place for you to click to learn all about the schedule, the speaker lineup, where you find the site near you. It's all right there for easy navigation. What are the dates? October the 21st and the 22nd, Thursday and Friday. Of this year? Of this year, yes. And is this the first one, or have you been having No, we've it done the... three before. We did one our very first year right out of the gate, and we were so favored by having uh, Chuck Swindoll and Josh McDowell and others as, oh. and as our keynote speakers. Here we were, this little tiny organization. They blessed us with that. We had uh, one, another one in 2017, then 2019 in February. We were going to do one last year, of course, but covid postponed us to this Okay, fall. friends and neighbors out there who are listening to us, uh, you have heard it. I hope that thousands of you will register for this event. Uh, you talked about driving to a location. Can you do it online? No, you can't do it online until afterwards. But because this really is a conference where gathering is an important feature of the conference. And we know that there are some challenges to that with uh, different regulations regarding masks and everything around the country. But you know what? We're going to plow ahead. We want grandparents interacting with each other. And there will be opportunities later for you to get all the materials and listen to it. But for those two days, your option is to attend a site and enjoy it just like you would a conference before COVID. Are they held in churches? They are all held in churches. Yes. But the church is not sponsoring it. The, it. the church is our partner. 
in doing this. I see. So they, they do all the local work. They, they provide the MC. They provide the greeters and everything. And so they partner with us in this. Larry, I hope it is a smashing success. Well, we, we hope that too. We're really praying that. It's we'll two days. It's two days. Most of it is listening to speakers. Most of it is enjoying the speakers. But I tell you, it will transform them. My favorite story is of a couple that have become good friends. I didn't know them at the time. Their names are Tom and Nancy Smith. And they live in Pasadena. You know uh, that town. I know that town. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nancy was sent by her church to the last one. Tom did not want to go. He could not imagine spending two days listening to speakers about the topic of grand... Boy, have I heard that before. (laughs) In fact, he would tell you, he says, I I thought I was a good grandparent. I thought, well, I love them. I do all these things with them. I, I think I'm good. He was there one hour later. He said, oh my, God has changed my heart. I got a lot to learn. And I tell you what, they have dramatically improved their grandparenting. They're wonderful, godly people, were before, still are, <laughs> but they just didn't have all the practical tools that they learned during this time to be, become even better grandparents. May the Lord continue to bless this wonderful ministry and bless you. How can we pray for you, Larry? Well, uh, of course, <laughs> I'm a novice at this thing of leading an organization. I need wisdom. I've been a second guy. I've been a vice president before. I never led anything. So the idea of leading an organization is way beyond me. That that keeps me dependent upon the Lord. So ministry-wise, you can pray for that. The most important thing is I want to fulfill those first two words of Deuteronomy 4.9. I want to watch myself. Mm-hmm. And I want to end this life continuing to become more godly with each year that passes. I'd appreciate prayer that God would enable Those me to tears that. are precious. You mm-hmm. care about this issue, I don't you? Mm-hmm. I hope mm-hmm. that that emotion will go out mm-hmm. from this studio and touch people across the country and maybe around the world. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. taking the time to be with us a second time. I really feel your passion and I share it. And I know you I'm do. a grandparent too. Mm-hmm. And I can take all the advice I can yeah. get. Give your wife my regards, Diane. Mm -hmm. And she didn't like studios, but you bring her here next time. (laughs) I sure will. Thank you, my brother. Wow. I don't know about you, but I was certainly inspired by today's program and also yesterday's program, this two-part discussion on the topic of leaving a legacy as a grandparent. In Mark Gregston's recent interview with Dr. Tim Clinton here on Family Talk, Mark pointed out that God isn't keeping us grandparents around so we can simply just buy an RV and drive off to the desert. (laughs) No, grandparents have a God-ordained duty to impact their kids and grandkids for the Lord for as long as they are able. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Dr. Dobson's guest today, Larry Fowler, and his ministry, The Legacy Coalition, or their upcoming Legacy Grandparenting Summit, visit our broadcast page at drjamesdobson.org forward slash broadcast. That's drjamesdobson.org forward slash broadcast. Or give us a call at 877-732-6825. Now, before we close this program, I want to remind you that September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Suicidal thoughts can affect anyone, male or female, regardless of age or background. If you or someone you know is in crisis and is experiencing difficult or even suicidal thoughts, call the National Suicide Lifeline at 800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. Or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. That's suicidepreventionlifeline.org. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is a national network of crisis centers that provides free and confidential emotional support to people in suicidal crisis or emotional distress, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. There is help and there is hope. And remember, if you're looking for specifically a Christian counselor, you can visit Connect. Dot aacc.net. That's the web address at the American Association of Christian Counselors. Connect.aacc.net. You know, sometimes it's that first step of admitting you need help and then reaching out 
that is the hardest, but it's the most important one to take. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Roger Marsh, and I think Lisa and I are going to spend some time with our own grad kids later. We've been inspired by the contents of today's and yesterday's program. And if you're a grandparent, I hope you'll do the same. From all of us here at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, God's richest blessings to you and your family. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. This is James Dobson again. Before we go, I'd like to remind you that Family Talk is a listener-supported program. If you've enjoyed this broadcast, we'd appreciate your helping to keep us on the air. As you know, we talk about everything from religious liberty to the sanctity of human life and raising boys and girls, among others. Uh, These are the passions of our hearts, and I hope they are for you, too. Thank you so much for listening and for being part of this ministry. For more information, go to drjamesdobson.org.